my god! It's beautiful! Hello, Wonder Hussy here, all dressed up like Inspector Gadget, ready to go on an archaeological expedition. <laughs> That's right, I'm here in Las Vegas, which is one of the most modern cities in the world. And by that, I don't mean that it's especially cutting edge. I mean that it's literally one of the newest cities in the world. I mean, it's barely existed as a city for, gosh, a little over a hundred years. And most of the development happened in the last 30 years. So everything here is relatively new. Uh, in fact, when a casino, hotel, or showgirl, for that matter, gets to be a certain age, well, we generally just blow it up and build something shiny and new in its place. Caesar's Palace cocktail waitresses notwithstanding. But what if I told you that just outside the city limits is one of the oldest archaeological sites in all of North America. <laughs> That's right, apparently humans have been living in this area for thousands of years before Bugsy Siegel was even a glimmer in his mom's eye. It's a cave, or I guess uh, more accurately, a series of caves, or a cave with five different chambers. Uh, and it's right here outside town. Uh, I first found out about it when I was just randomly searching Google Maps looking for interesting stuff in Las Vegas, and I couldn't believe I'd never heard of it. But come to find out. That was kind of intentional. Apparently, the cave can only be accessed uh, by using this road that also goes to a big gypsum plant. And I guess the operators of the gypsum plant didn't want people going out there poking around, causing traffic. The state of Nevada did put a historical marker at the turnoff off of the main road to Lake Mead back in 1994, but I guess the gypsum company took the marker down. And I think for a while they even had like private property, no trespassing signs on the road that you turn off on, which come to find out is completely false. I did my research, it's a public road. Anyone can use it. And matter of fact, anybody can get to this cave. Uh, if you have a four wheel drive vehicle, you can pretty much drive, I think almost right up to it without trespassing on any private property whatsoever. But then I also read that the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, who I guess kind of uh, maintains or curates the site, well, I guess they don't really want people going out there and poking around because, <laughs> well, you know how people are, there's garbage everywhere here, they'll trash a place. But uh, they don't explicitly prohibit visiting this cave, so I figured, <laughs> I figured it would be okay if I went and checked it out, if I tread lightly and I don't disturb anything, and I'm also gonna bring a trash bag with me, to pick up any litter I do come across. So let's go check out this famous archeological site. Now, I guess this cave was discovered back in 1930 by this archeologist named Mark Raymond Harrington, who sounded like a really <laughs> interesting guy. I guess he was friends with this wealthy patroness of the arts uh, back in New York City. And well, he supposedly introduced her and her friends to peyote <laughs> at this legendary counterculture party back in the day, which I'll be honest, sounds like it was probably absolutely amazing. Anyway, he was originally from Michigan, but he ended up working as an archeologist in Los Angeles. And then he, I don't know, somehow got interested and started studying the uh, Native American basket weaver culture which I guess was an ancient Pueblo Indian civilization that apparently had a huge city down, uh, right down here on the Virgin River under what's now Lake Mead. Uh, I mean, it was supposed to be one of the biggest Native American cities. There were houses in it that had like 20 rooms. Uh, in fact, I think there was even a couple houses that had like a hundred rooms. So apparently it was a pretty big civilization. Anyway, I don't know how he ended up discovering this cave or stumbling on this cave because uh, if I was an archaeologist and I was looking for signs of human habitation, I probably wouldn't look out here in the middle of a, well, in the middle of a barren desert. Like, I think even back in the Ice Age, this was like 10 or 12 miles from the nearest water source. And yeah, I guess the climate was a little bit 
cooler and wetter, you know, 11,000 years ago here, but I think it was still relatively hot and arid. So I don't know why he was looking for signs of civilization out here, but I guess it kind of does stand to reason that, uh, well, if this big basket weaver city was, that was only about 50, 60 miles mm, away from here. Uh, and then it was relatively hot and arid here. Well, I guess it stands to reason people would have taken shelter in caves. So maybe he was just kind of poking around exploring all the caves in the area. I don't know. Anyway, whatever the case, he ended up finding the cave and inside it, he found all kinds of artifacts that turned out to be as old as 10 or 11,000 years old. Now, I guess there was some amount of controversy over the age of some of the stuff he found because well, back then they didn't have uh, the same kind of dating methods that we do now, scientific dating methods. Uh, but I think they were out here again, or they analyzed some of the stuff he found out here again, like three, four years ago. And using modern techniques, I think the consensus is that there was something called the Shasta ground sloth. That was some kind of prehistoric mega fauna. <laughs> And it lived in this cave up until like 11,000 years ago. And then I think they figured that humans moved into the cave uh, around 4,000 years ago. So it's like 2000 BC. Right here outside Vegas. Okay, we're rolling up on the cave, or I think where the cave is. Now, there, like I said, there's hardly any information online about this place, uh, probably on purpose. So. Well, I found it pinned on Google Maps, like the general area where the cave is, but it doesn't say exactly, you know, where the entrance is. So for that, I think we're going to have to hike and sort of poke around a little bit. Okay, well, maybe it'll be easier to find this cave than I thought, because it looks to me like there's a pretty well-defined trailhead here. And it's got uh, those little signs that say, please don't erase the traces of America's past. Sites in this area are periodically monitored by federal law enforcement personnel. So it doesn't say you can't go in. And in fact, well, looks like some dim-witted cholo was here. So uh, like I said, I think I'll be fine to go in there and uh, poke around as long as I don't disturb anything. And you know, I'll do my part to pick up some trash, which I'm sure there will be some because I already see broken glass on the ground. <laughs> Let's all go drink beer at the old caveman hut. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, they figure humans moved into this cave like 4,000 years ago and they were able to figure that out because they found, there's this thing called an atlatl, which was A-T-L-A-T-L, -A -T -L, atlatl. It was like a spear that the Native Americans in this part of the country used to throw to hunt. And I guess they found like parts of the wooden shaft or parts of the spear points or they called them darts in one article I read. They found some of that in these caves or in the rooms of this cave and they were able to carbon date those to, uh, gosh, I think maybe even over 4,000 years old. And then I guess uh, Harrington found a basket in one of the chambers that uh, was woven differently than any other uh, weaving technique in any other basket ever found. And when they dated that, it was like, I think it was 9,280 years old. Almost 10,000 years old, isn't that amazing? A 10,000 year old basket found in a cave 17 miles from my house in downtown Vegas. Who'da thunk? Okay, let me strap on my litter gathering bag, which happens to be a very cool bag somebody sent me. Look at this. Uh, it says desert water bag. It's canvas. Well, I guess this is how uh, they used to carry drinking water in the desert. I guess if you saturate this canvas, it becomes more or less waterproof. And so you could fill it with water and carry it with you, sort of like a canteen well that's my understanding anyway this is just a reproduction probably made in china so i doubt it's waterproof but hey it'll do for picking up trash plus it matches my outfit which you can probably see i did go to exceptional lengths to put together i wanted to look like an archaeologist somebody else sent me this indiana jones hat and i thought it was just the right thing to wear when exploring a prehistoric cave okay let's go find this cave before we uh, set off on the trail, you can see there's the gypsum plant over there. And then out that way is Lake Mead. So obviously Lake Mead wasn't here in prehistoric times, but there was a river down there. The, I guess the Virgin River, the Muddy River, and the Colorado River all kind of uh, came to a confluence down there. Uh, but that was like 
I think I read it was like 10 or 12 miles from this cave. So these people were living a long way from water and they didn't even have a canvas bag to tote it with. So gosh, I'm not sure how they got their drinking water. Okay, while we're hiking, let me just tell you the rest of what I was able to read online. So I guess there was also some controversy uh, when Harrington first excavated this cave because he found all this uh, Shasta ground sloth dung and that was dated to uh, 11,000 years ago and they found a bunch of other um, Pleistocene or prehistoric animals like camels, dire wolves, deer, bighorn sheep, and then this, you know, it's called a stilt-legged horse. So they found a bunch of prehistoric or I don't know what you call it, Pleistocene era, I guess, uh, animal fragments and bones and stuff in here. Uh, some of them even still had the, the sinew, the tendons on the bones, because I guess the it's very dry here. Obviously it's very arid and the, it's kind of relatively cool inside the cave. So it, I guess it's like the ideal environment for preserving, well, sinew and tendons. So man, that's how they were able to date some of this stuff to like 11,000 years old, which I think is pretty amazing. But anyway, I guess Harrington, uh, caused some controversy because he made some faulty assumptions about like he found the human remains like the spear tips or whatever they at Lottle the dart shafts or whatever he found those under sloth dung so I don't know his whole hypothesis which at the time was like controversial was that humans actually coexisted at the same time as these ice age animals which I guess no one had ever thought before uh, but I think they proved that to be a faulty assumption uh they went in like with modern techniques and unfortunately there weren't cavemen living here like clan of the cave bear eating mammoths and dire wolves but hey it is vegas so who's really paying attention to historical accuracy you know what i mean okay wow i haven't had to hike very far at all you can see my car is just right there and i think we might already be coming up on the the cave entrance i'm pretty sure i recognize this from photos that i saw online this is the mouth of the, well, cave complex. Okay, so there's where we came down the trail. This is the entrance to the first chamber. I think it's supposed to be a five chamber cave, so I would count that as one, I suppose. And then let's see what's over here. Some joker put a Halloween tombstone here. I don't know if like some kids were up here listening to heavy metal music and praising Satan and having rituals. Oh, look, there's like beams in here. Oh, wow. Yeah, look, it's like shored up down there. Wow, this is freaking wild. It goes down, down, down. Uh, I don't know, though. Let's, uh, let's poke around and see what else we see first before I go I'm putting myself in mortal danger like that. Okay, well, I'm going to count that as chamber number two. That first one we looked in was number one, two... Well, let's see. This looks like it's all just rubble filled in, but there are, it's interesting. There's still boards and stuff here. I wonder if something collapsed. Oh, wow. Look, yeah, here you can see big timbers. Just like I'm in an old mine. But I guess they used those timbers to shore up the dig site or something. Okay, so one, two, three. I read like there was five chambers and then I also read there were six. So there's either two or three more chambers. Oh my God, look, somebody's... <laughs> Isn't that a tag from like a cruise ship luggage? Lori Brown. Uh, somehow I doubt she found ecstasy on a carnival cruise ship, if you know what I mean. Uh, I hate to say this, but I actually went on a carnival cruise once and not to sound like a total elitist snob, but it was one of the most depressing experiences of my life. Not to sound like David Foster Wallace or anything. Anyway, I'll just put that luggage tag right in my litter bag and carry on about my business. Okay, here we're going into what is presumably the fourth chamber. Oh, wow, this is big. Oh, actually, before I go in here, I wanted to say, uh, look at the ceiling, okay? It's interesting because there's all this discoloration on the ceiling of this cave, and I, my assumption was that it was smoke from fires, uh, and it kind of does look like smoke in some parts, but it also kind of just looks like lichen or something. I mean, I can't imagine that there's lichen growing out here in the desert, so that doesn't really make sense, but maybe it's just some kind of like weird rust or minerals. Okay, so now we're coming into this wing and it looks like, well, I guess maybe this could be considered a chamber, even though it's just sort of like an alcove. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this number four and then number five is probably right back over here. Oh, wow, yeah, look up here. It looks like it kind of goes back into some little crawl spaces. 
Wow, look at the, I don't know if you can see, but the ceiling in here is really interesting. It's almost kind of sparkly. I keep seeing little flashes of sparkle. I don't know if that camera is picking that up. And then you can see like what the, what it's made out of. I don't know anything about rocks, but you can see it's all lumpy and weird and uh, shiny. Like there's little crystals in it. Oh, see that? It's almost like a cross section of a geode here. Look at that. That's cool. Man, it would have been so cool. Oh, dick. Well, I guess it's someone's name. Uh, it would have been so cool to be the first person to come in here and find like that basket and stuff. That, that guy must have been so excited when he found that basket. He was probably so excited he went <laughs> straight home and did some peyote. One, two, three, four. So I'm guessing this whole alcove here is number five, maybe six. Maybe that's why it was considered five slash six because this side almost looks like it goes up into a little another room. Uh, it's pretty small though. If anything, they would have just used this for like food storage, I would guess, because gosh, even I would have a hard time squeezing back in there and I'm a small person. Although if you did get in there, it does look like it opens up. Uh, I don't know though, I, it's, it doesn't look like it opens up very much and I don't really feel like it would be worth squeezing into <laughs> getting all dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this side. Go check out the other side. Wow, this is cool though, because we're right up against the ceiling now and you can see what it's made out of. It almost looks like styrofoam. I, I don't know, is this, this must be gypsum, right? I mean, that's the name of this place. I feel like it's okay to say the name of this because it's pinned on Google Maps. It's called Gypsum Cave and it's right by a giant gypsum plant. So stands to reason the cave's probably made out of gypsum. And I know gypsum, which is what they use to make drywall, is white and this is white, so. I didn't realize gypsum was so, uh, it looked like it was sparkly. And then we saw that really cool cross section that definitely was sparkly. So maybe that was some outer layer on it. Look at this. Wow. So neat. Then look up here. This looks like a flat area. Would be a good place for everybody to pass out and sleep, or at least a few people. Gosh, I wonder how many people lived in here at a time, you know, like how people used to live back then. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I really know next to nothing about Ice Age peoples or prehistoric peoples. Uh, I guess they wouldn't have been here in the Ice Age. Whatever 4,000 years ago, prehistoric people. I don't know a whole lot about them, but my assumption would be that they lived in little groups, like bands, sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. 10, 15 people, maybe. I mean, the cave's certainly big enough to support that many people living in it. Maybe more than 15, I don't know. I mean, cause they, they wouldn't want to inbreed with each other. So they must have known enough somehow to only breed with other bands in the area. Gosh, you know, I thought that was soot, but if you look at it, I think it's just black rock. So it's like white gypsum and black rock sort of mixed together, which is, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of weird, but what do I know? Uh, I guess I should go back and try to climb into one of those holes. First, let me do a little bit of trash picking up. Okay, wow, I picked up like a whole bag of trash already, but look at this one can that I found. This is actually kind of cool. It's a Dr. Pepper can, but look how old it is. It's been sitting in this cave all the time, so it's still all shiny on the front. I almost feel like, well, first of all, I think this is over 50 years old, so technically it is protected by the Antiquities Act and I'm not allowed to pick it up. Uh, so should I leave this here? Or should I take it with me? Gosh, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm just gonna stuff all that trash into my desert water bag and hike on back over to this one chamber that looked like it was less difficult than the others to get into. That one that we looked in over here by the grave looked like it was sort of easy-ish to get in. You know, compared to some of those Little crawl spaces. This is like a cakewalk. <laughs> wow. Be real careful not to bonk my head because I didn't bring my hard hat. <laughs> oh, this is a really good thumbnail. Oh, wow. Yeah, this really opens up down here. This is like, this must have been the main digs. Can you imagine if, the, if there was a storm, it would be kind of cozy down here <laughs> in a creepy way. What if I came down here and there's a bunch of homeless people in here? Wouldn't that be freaky? Uh, I'm bad with dimensions, but God, it's probably at least 40 feet across. Oh gosh, I don't know. 
I mean, it's just one big room. Oh, it looks like it might even go farther down here. And there's just sort of like a pit with soiled rocks in it. I wonder if somebody peed on that or if that's just... Because there's no water down here. Like, some caves you go in, there's like drip, drip, drip. Well, this is a desert cave. It's very dry and dusty and a gypsum cave at that. So it's, imagine how dusty it is. Ugh. I'm going to need a shower for sure after I get out of here. Oh, yikes. Look at this graffiti. <laughs> kind of spooky. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what's what's so scary about prehistoric man anyways they were just people you know pretty much like us I had the same basic hopes and needs you know food shelter a fire sex clothes wow yeah look back in here this is a trip so this is like the farthest reach oh hey you know what we should do let's turn off all the lights and you're probably like, no, don't do that, Wonder Hussy. No, I just think it'd be fun to like sit here in this cave in the darkness. Oh, but before I do that, look at this. <laughs> and I sound like a, look, a squirrel. But look how, sh I don't know if this will show up on camera, but look how shiny this is. It's like where this exterior rusty looking stuff wore off or broke off. It's very shiny underneath. Hey, cool. Okay, anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's turn the... Uh, I mean, because prehistoric man, they wouldn't have had any lights other than a fire. And I don't even know how easy it was for them to start one of them. So just for a minute, let's use our imaginations, okay? Get your imagination out, sharpen it up, get it ready. I'm going to turn, first I'm going to turn this light off. It's pitch black. Can't even see the opening. You know, what if my light never comes back on? How am I going to find my way back out of this cave? Oh, yikes. Just kidding. I'm not here to tell ghost stories. I'm just here to imagine what it must have been like to be a prehistoric person in this cave 4,000 years ago. I'm sitting here, I'm wearing, if anything, I guess I might be wearing like a deer skin, like a really filthy dress, soiled dress made out of a deer skin that's never been washed. And of course I don't shave my legs. Of course I don't shave my underarms. My face is probably grimy. I probably never wash my hair, so it's hanging all matted and tangled. Uh, in other words, newsflash, I probably don't look anything like Raquel Welch on the poster for 1 million BC. <sighs> Hate to break it to you people. Anyway, I'm sitting here and, well, more likely than not, I probably have some kind of baby or toddler sucking at my breast. And there's probably another kid next to me. And there's probably a equally filthy man squatting somewhere nearby. Maybe he's tending the fire. Uh, I would guess I'm probably hungry. Because my understanding of even the Native American peoples in this area is that they would just spend all day, every day, trying to find stuff to eat. And I heard once, I don't know if this is accurate, but generally they would be able to get a fist-sized amount of edible material in a day. And so they were basically constantly hungry. But then if they were lucky and did manage to kill a bighorn sheep or something like that, then they would have a big feast and everybody would eat meat. And God, that must have been amazing. So yeah, I was dirty. I was hungry. I guess I wouldn't have been cold because I'm assuming this cave might stay warmer in the winter like it stays cooler in the summer I'm not sure how that works and if we had a fire going well I might be okay and I might actually I don't know I, I mean happiness is that a modern notion I might have been feeling pretty good because I had my kids with me my man with me we were safe we're in this cave no dire wolves can get us I guess it might not have been so bad like of course to us in our modern perspectives it just seems like, oh god, how horrible, I'm filthy and I can't shave my legs and uh, I got a kid sucking at my teeth and bleh. But if I didn't know any better, mm, I might have had just about everything I felt that I needed and I might have felt quite content. Okay, imagination time's over. <laughs> now let's, uh, I guess, make our way back out of this cave where we've been sitting and playing pretend. <laughs> Coming back out around the corner, we should be able to see a little sliver of daylight just around this corner where the entrance was. Oh, I hope. Yep. Oh, there it is. You can see. Huh. Sweet, blessed daylight. Get back out of this dark old cave. <laughs> Remember that song? Miller's Cave. It's like Hank Snow or some old timey country guy it was some song about Miller's Cave, some dark old cave. <laughs> Or no one ever came out alive. Hopefully that's not the case with this cave. 
gypsum cave or what about plato's cave if you've ever uh studied philosophy or read any philosophy i guess and i really haven't to be honest i kind of zoned all that out in college because i wasn't interested at the time but my understanding is that plato the philosopher had this theory that you know what if everything that we're experiencing like me talking to you you watching this video well what if all of this and your whole life you know your house your tv your beautiful wife your beautiful car all of that is just a shadow on the see my oh you probably can't see but my shadow is on the wall of that cave so what if everything we're looking at is just a shadow of what's really happening behind us and if we would just turn around and face the opening of the cave oh my goodness then we would really experience what it is to be alive anyway let's go out the entrance to this cave and imagine that we are coming out of Plato's cave, okay? We're gonna see what it's really like to really be alive, okay? It's time to use our imaginations one more time before this video is over. We've all been sitting in a dark cave our whole lives, watching shadows on the wall. And now, well, something prompted us to consider that there might be more. Oh, say maybe we went to a party and some random archeologist dude gave us peyote <laughs> and it planted the idea in our heads that, hey, there might be more to life. Maybe we're just looking at uh, shadows on a cave wall. Maybe if we step outside our realm of consciousness, why then we'll see what we've been missing out on all this time. Huh? Huh? Oh, look. It's getting brighter. <gasps> the air is getting fresher. <gasps> oh my goodness, I'm seeing things that, well, I never saw down in that cave. <sighs> New kinds of beer cans. Wow. Oh my God. It's beautiful! <laughs> oh my gosh! There's a plant, there's a bird, there's a chemtrail, there's clouds. Oh my god, there's this searing bright ball of light and energy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tour inside prehistoric gypsum cave right outside Las Vegas. Really a cool place to go. And if you do visit it, please don't deface anything. Don't destroy anything. And well, please bring a bag and pick up a few pieces of trash as you go.